Hello, faithful viewer, and welcome to episode 13. Um, I'm Phil Collinson, uh, the producer of Doctor Who. I am Russell T. Davis, the writer of this episode. Hello, I'm Julie Gardner, the executive producer. Hooray. So here we are. In Torchwood. In Torchwood, yeah. It's very interesting for us because we're doing this like about 10 days before transmission, so we don't know how much of this story leaked out. No. no. Um, so far, as we're recording this on the Wednesday, like the week before, so no secrets particularly leaked. Um, no stunt casting at the end uh, leaked out or anything like that, so um, I wonder. Yeah, we'll see. People, people sort of know, well, people do know that it's Billy's last episode, but they really are, are all expecting... Um, um, but will she the die? Worst. Will she yeah. die or won't she? So what will happen? I know it amazes me. People think she could die because I know the sun said she will die, and you know that's willful speculation. But um, he'd never kill her, would you? No. He watched absolutely. his show. If he seriously watched his show, you think this is a show that would never, ever, ever kill his lead character because no, no. it's just it's the wrong feeling. Oh, look at that! The gleaming. How could them. you get rid of Rose Tyler as a character? How could you kill her? And in amongst our marvelous secrets, it is worth telling the story about how the Black Dalek turned up at the Baftas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Day, that Black Dalek was the worst kept, well kept secret in the history of the world. <laughs> and then we're standing on stage, getting a Bafta, and the whole audience starts laughing. Do you remember? Over and, my speech, could uh, I say? Yes. Spe- did talking. you know what they were like? Yeah. You were hugging Davina McCall. No. No, I didn't know what they were laughing at. <laughs> and I, I thought looking. Julie was being particularly eloquent. I was moment. really going for it. I, I think at that yes. point I was mm. thanking you. I, I thought was... you'd said something funny because on stage you can't really hear what's being said no, with the microphone. No. And it's like, it was like a nightmare, all these laughing faces. And I did not know what well, was going on. Well, I kept talking. going. I, I was talking to Davina and she, she was kind of going, look, <laughs> look, behind you, look. And I turned round and there he was. And there was the black darling. And the first thing Russell said to me as we were walking off stage, it's black! It's not <laughs> supposed to be on here! We've never shown a black Dalek! It's, it's the end of episode 13 of it's a black a secret. Dalek! <laughs> so oh. it's a miracle we've got this far in our secrets, given where we started. Did we ever find out how they got the black Dalek? No, no, uh, no idea. Never mind. It's, a, it's the same... Tell you something else. The black Dalek on stage with us at the Baptist had a red eye. Oh. We've Did never it? put a... Yep. Well... So it was an old I'm sure. Prop. Are you sure? That wasn't just too much vodka. I'm <laughs> 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 even red eyes. <laughs> you might be right. I sure. think it had red eyes. Do you think, so do you think it was, was, was it, dolly bollies? <laughs> <laughs> was it an old prop? Had no, they just, had no, they just it, got, was it was ours. It was definitely ours. They got the proper yeah. ridges and you know, all the new stuff. But yeah. our people yeah. were there with it, though, so I, I don't know how it could have had a red eye. We love to listen to this podcast, listen to us talk about our champagne night out in London. It was a champagne night out. It's hard work, this show. It's really it's tough. such hard work. Where are we now, Philip? Um, we're in a we're in a house in Grangetown, which we also shot part of um, episode five and six in. Oh. Um, it was a particular street that we used, and we'd also yeah. s- actually used that street in the Christmas Invasion. And mm. um, it was the street yes. where people were streaming out, um, uh, the sky. with the mum saying, yeah, "Oh, come on, come on." Do you remember Stop, in out of it? the very first edit of this, the attack on the bridge lasted about seven minutes? It, it did. <laughs> it was massive. Wasn't How it? long was our first fine cut? Cause we'd, it was it about was six minutes over, so yeah. it was about over. 15 minutes. Most of minutes. it was on this bridge. <laughs> attack on the bridge. <laughs> Graham loved his bridge. I know. It was a oh. heck of a day. That was a whole day. I love the CGI scene. of, of battle torn yeah. London. And it's very interesting. It's It's a real challenge on this, trying to. You know, oh, the sad men are invading the world. How do we, how do we tell that story? Mm. And how do we pull that off? And, and the bridge was brilliant because it was written as a street, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, and Graham found that bridge, and it really makes it. It looks like yeah. they're defending something. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what, but it does like, slightly make it slightly more, more epic, doesn't it? Mm. Yes. And there's no CGI replication there or anything. All of that sequence really is prac effects mm. and prac cybermen. No, here we go, Russell. You're a very bad man with a sucker. I love a death. You, you love a, love a you death. love a sucker death. I love in G. I think if you can keep on finding new ways for the Daleks to kill people, because yes. I yeah. know we've seen people suckered before, yeah. but they haven't extracted extract brainwaves. Yes. I love that line, and and they've never been able to do that mm. before. Well, we've never known that they've not. Of been course, able they to could do, do that it. before. Yes, exactly. So um, it's a new Dalek skill, and I think every time they appear, we should give them a little something. And this like, scene is really scary for that because you're expecting the suckering, mm. and then it's worse. It's something new. We really struggled with this shot to grade it, actually. They'd Did you? Of, so, Did yeah, you? If, you, oh. if you look at it, it doesn't quite match in with all the others. There's something about the fact they had to, they had to take... Um, had a clean plate mixed with a live plate. And I don't know, it's never happened before. It's something about the colours in there oh. as well. Right. 
Mm. And of course, it is worth saying about this episode that bless Graham Harper because mm. it's saying the obvious, but the challenges of having the Cybermen meet the Daleks is extraordinary. Yes, it I is. mean, what a diff- it's it's I huge in that, in that tone meeting sort of thing. Right, there's ten men in suits fighting four men in cones. Yeah, and they're Off all blind. Go. They're and all they're all <laughs> blind because the Cybermen had no periphery vision. The Daleks have virtually got no vision whatsoever. I know. He did Absolute amazingly. Nightmare. And, and we're in so many different locations here. Yes. I mean, that's underneath. Um, that's underneath the sh- one of the shopping centres in the centre of Cardiff. This this stuff, and then back on the Dalek. Yes. It's the only moment we went there for. We've got our smooth floors sorted out, though. Yes. Oh. We have. They glide, don't they? They glide. Mm-hmm. Like We've learned. Great loads. choreography of the Daleks. Yeah. I love Beautiful. That. I love Daleks. You know, when we got, so do I. When we got the rushes for these days, I just mm. love them. Yeah, they're brilliant. They? And how brilliant was Nick Briggs on these episodes, d- alternating between the voice of the Cybermen and the Daleks? Do you know there, we never yep. got a big enough moment on the Doctor seeing the Daleks no, for the first the time. No, the reveal. No. And, or we should have scored it or something just a little bit never mm. quite no that's right it's, it's huge true, that. it's a bigger close-up I mean you could argue that he's, he's hiding all his reactions and, and he's in front of the Cybermen and also what would he do go swear you know say mm. oh bleep it's the Daleks but um there's a little you want a little camera push in or something yeah. don't you to really maybe we could try and that. do that actually it's funny it's funny because what's lurking underneath this whole story here they are declaring war with each other can you imagine Daleks and Cybermen at war mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what's underneath this whole story I've never told you this that's the point of a podcast. Hooray! Is that, and I never ever bothered putting this in the script. Not bothered, but I thought mm. long and hard about it. Never put it in the script because it w- would have weighed down the whole thing. But why does the sphere come out here on Earth? And you could argue there's a yes. spatial anomaly that the Yvonne describes as 600 feet up and stuff like that. But actually, but I think the sphere made that spatial anomaly. It like banged its way through until it got here. Because actually, I'll get to the point in a minute. The whole mm. point of the Daleks' plan is if you're hiding in a void ship and then planning to return to the universe, you would program the void ship, because they've got to open the Genesis arc, to return to a point where you're most likely to find a time traveller, because they need a time traveller to touch Mm. the arc. Yes. So actually, it's the Doctor's fault all this happens, because they go to modern-day London. Where because you're most they know likely, to find where, you know, a yes. onboard computer yes. aboard the void ship would have worked out this is the one place in the whole universe where you are most likely to encounter a time traveller who could touch the arc there and you open go. it up. So he's to blame for the whole story. You so can, what, you what can see I, why I didn't put it in. What I love about that is how much thought you've put into this, as, <laughs> you, as you do on every single script. Because he just rattles them off. at the <laughs> same <laughs> time, I'm immensely grateful you didn't put that in, because wow. that would have been so much exposition. So much and tedium, I yes. know, yes. But, also, but that makes no, great sense. No, because I could have written it and made it all sound sparkling mm. and marvellous, but actually it would have lumbered the Doctor with so much guilt. guilt. Too much guilt. It's like, it's all his fault. And yet I sort of like that, the, the losing Rose at the end. Actually, you are architect of your own downfall and um, etc. And it makes sense with Rose. Yes, like, it it's, does. It's her birthplace and that becomes her death place in a way. Um, but that is really too much guilt. There's enough already. There's enough already. Coming perhaps, soon. Perhaps in a quiet moment in the TARDIS he'll realise this and... Um, well upon it. Mm. <gasps> Look, I, is it once they twitch those Daleks I love them and every time we have those moments where they slide back as they're scared of the Doctor mm. they've got so much character every little noise put in yeah. Yeah. beautiful that. you really see the little thing inside can't you there it's freaking out they're <laughs> it's all Barney. freaking out <laughs> <laughs> don't call Barney little thing should I I'm so naughty and Mickey's <laughs> back a different man yes he is Loving it. So loving it. Mm-hmm. This was hard to get right. Do you remember of like the sound balance yes. here of the panic of Jackie? You absolutely need to hear the cyber leader's line there about keep the doctor. And as a result, we lose a bit of Jackie's panic, don't yeah. we? It's, which is the real point of the scene. Mm. And yet, if you didn't hear the cyber leader's reason for keeping the doctor, yeah. it didn't make sense. So, um, oh, we're never happy. Uh, we actually shot a little moment outside that set as well as yes. she's looking at her. She's dragged off and saying. What was she saying? Was um, yeah, you, you promised, promised you me promised again. All of that stuff. Because I felt that like I was too snatched. I remember sitting with Graham and saying, "No, I think we need the moment outside the door." Of course, he was right. We didn't need the moment outside. Well, it's the just door. so horrifying because it's mm. Jackie. Yes. Going to be upgraded mm. and and it's, it's. I mean, this scene is extraordinary. Well, particularly so because you've seen it happen to her in the alternative yes. universe as well. I sort of, I think, as a oh, viewer, yeah. you would really, really think, "Oh, I they're going to do right. to her again." Yeah. Maybe one of these is her. Maybe Cyber Jack is there. <gasps> yeah. She's come oh, through. Oh, gosh, of course. 
Oh, well, I'd never thought of that. Wow. Went down. They all blew up. They all blew up in Battersea Power Station. <coughs> they were doomed. Jackie blew up. I so. Love this death. Love she is this amazing. Death. We must take time here to praise Tracy Ann Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Ann Cyberman as Russell Chris. What an amazing performance. It's just perfect. It's heroic and desperate and sad That's and brilliant. full of guilt. She's she, um, amazing. She, phoned, she, she spoke to me on the phone the other week and she's, and, and she's having a baby. Yes. Uh, she is. And she's having a baby that Aww. was conceived while she was doing this job. And I said, oh, well, no. who was it? Who <laughs> was it? <laughs> well, it wasn't you then. <laughs> I, said it was, I said, it wasn't me, was it? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Isn't that I brilliant? Didn't know. Isn't that brilliant? Oh. Yeah. Isn't that brilliant? A Doctor Who baby, she said. Not a, cy- Obviously not a cyber baby. Husband. <laughs> Obviously <laughs> with her husband. <laughs> not a cyber baby. But that's lovely. She's adorable and she just pitches it so right. She's perfect. Oh, do you know, I Chilling. honestly... Much as I love that death scene, I also think what a mistake to kill her off. Oh, she's I glorious. I'd love to have brought her back. I love her. She's a stag she's mm. a staggering presence. I think. Now Russell, tell us about these yellow buttons. <laughs> you loved the yellow buttons, didn't you, Phil? Oh God. <laughs> no, I, I was like freaking out about the yellow I know, buttons. I know, I I'm with Phil. Those yellow buttons. But they they are telling a very important well, story. Well, I did all right, I didn't quite on the drawing they look beautiful yellow and on so we're talking about the yellow buttons that the troopers that we call them troopers in the script as opposed to soldiers troopers yeah. come from the parallel universe with um, Jake and at a CGI shot of yes, uh, staircases descending down there um, and, you know they've got to have these devices to go to and go to the parallel world and yes I signed off on the big yellow button <laughs> and then we saw them and then we saw them <laughs> and they look them. like what's that what's that the game them. that you yeah. used to have on, on, yes. on Fisher Price game like, was Simple it Simon, Simon Says, Simon Simon says, says. Look. Oh, sweet <laughs> Lord, I was freaking out. I mean, you can't miss them as a plot device. <laughs> give you well, they, do, they do help the, the jump between the parallel worlds. They're very you are subtle. right, it's very clear. <laughs> I swear to go it, somewhere else. When you get that sort of yellow as, as a drawing, it's like marble and it's beautiful and it's brilliant. And I just go, oh, yes, that's really vivid. That'll really stand out. It does. <laughs> look at it. Like but, look, you or, can't miss or it. Or one of those no, you biscuits absolutely you can't miss buy, it. Sort of lemon one of those biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I love this moment when Pete comes in. I, know. I love the I love the lighting in this scene. Mm-hmm. I think the way we've well. and you've graded the different yeah. parallel worlds is so clear and, and clever. The way Graham did that mix as well. I Beautiful that between the two because we were never quite yeah. sure how to jump between the parallel mm. worlds. I wish I put in a little bit more dialogue earlier, saying it's funny when you watch. Um, and I thought I'd been really careful when you watch twelve and thirteen uh, from scratch. The whole parallel world thing is very much taken as red that you know what's going on, and um, I'm normally quite careful about that. And I was doozy on this one. I um, think it's pretty clear. It's not, you know, you oh, think it out of your head and watch it and you're yeah. like, going, what the... It, it starts to clarify itself here. Parallel, 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 parallel tor- torch wood. Torch as he says in my Geordie <laughs> accent. Um, but, um, but actually, when the Cybermen appear in episode 12, there's no parallel line there. It's weird. It's not clearly said. Now I don't think it matters there, though. Mm, I don't. Uh, I am astonished by myself here for using it. You know I hate yeah. back-referencing. And all this sort of stuff. Yes. I hate references back like that. And I'm so not worried by why the Dalek was activated by the by that time energy in the first place. But it was impossible mm. to keep Rose and Mickey alive in this room. I got halfway through the script. She originally got through the script on a promise by that lie she does at the beginning. Oh, that, not that lie, that true thing of saying, I'll tell you about the time war. I have information. Mm. Yes. And I got to about this page and I was like, it's just, they... They kill her. They extract brainwaves and they would just do it. It's like... Um, so I had to invent all this stuff, which is good for the plot in the end. But um, I just mm. hate that level of back reference. I must be honest and say it's starting. To it's look done very neatly, though. It it's is done, done very neatly. succinctly. It's a bit I, like culty, that, it's a bit I think I don't know. There's a sort I like of a nice that, moment. There's a nice thing about flashing back and seeing her there with the Dalek. I don't think as a viewer, as a casual viewer, I often love that when shows do that and show you a little glimpse and yeah. you remember it. And you I think it's really well you balanced. gives a little extra experience. Because it's a reward for the regular viewer, yeah. but it's so short, it doesn't affect... I don't know. I was happy to do it in the end because cause that's a very famous moment in, in, in episode six from last year of... I remember the woman, on, Leslie, who was on the tiller, W. H. Smith in Manchester. That's one of her favourite moments. Hello, Is Leslie. It? Hello, Leslie. Watching. Bless her, she always serves me. And, um... <laughs> she loved that bitch. Ooh, Rose touched the Dalek in it, and it set off. Aww. She was like that. So, um, you know, that is a genuinely famous moment. So, therefore, I can live with it. But I don't. I'm know. glad you did. Mm. <laughs> I love the sound here. Do you remember this? this yeah, it's much. It's, it's the atmosphere. More, more echoey, isn't it? In this room, it's just. Mm. 
brilliantly sort of not dead, just haunted. It's a bit like mm. you know, it's all getting a bit heaven and hellish, isn't it? And but I'm sad we're watching the podcast without sound. Do we always do the podcast without we sound? We do now. We, we made that decision. We tried to sit you with headphones on as well. You'd be so glad we haven't got headphones on. No, I so Terrifying. wouldn't be. I love the sound on this episode. And I love the music. <laughs> so I'm sad. But I'm still loving the pictures. <laughs> if you could see Julie now, she's got turned down corners of her mouth. I have. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen us trying to balance these headsets and earphones. We I had turned down corners of our mouths. <laughs> Can I say, I don't know why you're complaining. Last year, when we did our first one, we were also wearing party hats. <laughs> the Christmas party invasion. hats, headphones, <laughs> we were, we? And, and microphones. Sweet Come on, we've got Lord. it made today. I'll tell you what will make a podcast interesting. Where have we come from today? Hey! Oh, yes. Today we've just come from um, a read-through of our um, Christmas special 2006. Hooray. Which so we can now say the day. title of, of course, because it's been transmitted. Go on, yes, say it, Russell. The Runaway Bride. Yes, so hooray. Just seen that. And what's the date today? So 29th of June. 29th of June. We've had the read-through with the marvellous stars and possibly one or two stars who haven't been announced yet, so we'll yep. shut up about that. But um, but it was uh, a great read-through. We had a good day. It was day. a genuinely exciting read-through. So we're back. Series we're 3. We're back. It's actually started now. Yep, we real. start next Tuesday, which is the uh, 3rd yes. of July. Yes, which is before this goes out. So, yes, hooray. Yeah. Oh, it's complicated. It's like time travel, this show. So, by the, so when you're listening to this, we'll have been filming for a few days. And also yesterday, Russell and I saw the first fine cut of episode one of Torchwood. Oh, how exciting. So it's all happening this week. Oh, we're not allowed to talk about that in the No, we're context. not. I know we're not. <laughs> However, I've just done it. I'm breaking my own rules and regulations. Hooray. Whoa, there they go. Back again. I love this video. This is the bit I added here on, on, the, on the phone with Jackie and ADR. She says, they tried to download me. <laughs> She's completely misunderstood all the upgrading <laughs> and the deleting. It's just a line in background. They tried to download me. Like, no love. <laughs> and there's a fire extinguisher. Bless her, Jackie on the she loose. She is just comedy value. She's so What amazing. are we going to do now? How sad that she's gone. <clears throat> it's like, she what is are the we going to do without lovely her? Woman. Billy and Camille and Noel? It's like we are yes. quietly heartbroken. But you move on. You do move on. Oh, and... you're hard. <laughs> no, I love them. Absolutely love them. But hey ho, mm. we can't stop making Doctor Who. It's, it's the law. <laughs> it is. I think it has to be made. But what there. would we do with our time? Well, yes. it's true. What would we do if we had a life again? Another thing that's never quite clear here, it's sort of clear, is that when the troopers arrive from the Hurlow universe, a lot of them run out the door and they've actually been fighting off the Cybermen the whole time. And there was a wide shot of that scene where the Cybermen stepped forward to surrender that had dead Cybermen on the floor. Yeah. But it's so unclear that I also had to be taken out because you actually spent the scene going, why are there Cybermen, well, yes. Cybermen dead on the floor? floor. Yeah. What we actually, because of course this is a very, very expensive episode. And when episodes get expensive, which is a nightmare, which is my fault, I accept the blame for that entirely. And I think you've done the most magnificent job on it. But when an episode's expensive, they start to get even more expensive. And so... Yeah, you know, we couldn't have scenes of troopers fighting Cybermen in the corridors. That that was never even in the first script because I was counting mm. um, stuff like that. So um, it's hard. You know, you can never quite afford everything that you want. Phil, but Phil explain why this particular episode was expensive. Well, it was well lots of reasons really. You didn't spend money dusting that eye, did you? <laughs> 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 it's a bit dusty. He's, isn't been, it? he's been in battle. It's the, it's he's been the... in battle. He's battle weary. He's not even in the void for like. A well, there years. we go. He's been miserable in the void. <laughs> well, it's kind of the scale of it. I mean, we, we have got lot, lots of side men out on the streets. Um, yeah. You know, lots of Cybermen mean lots of technicians, lots of people in lots of Cybermen. There are lots of practical effects in this, lots of CGI effects in this. All of these places are sets that built, had yeah. to be built yes. from completely from scratch. I mean, we often can try and recycle different rooms or different bits of spaceships. And if you look really carefully, you know, you'll often see bits of Satellite 5 cropping up in other sort of sci-fi sets that that, yeah. that we've had. But But... All of this, because it's so gleaming and so minimalist, just had to be taken from scratch. And so, you know, all of those things added together. Big cast. Mm, um, very big cast. Very big cast. Twelve um, cast is massive. Yeah, yeah um, big cast. Lots of lots of props had to be made. I mean, so they were all in all really quite expensive, these episodes. And CGI expensive too. Huge yeah, CGI. Yeah, to the max. Lots of CGI to the max. I mean, yeah. every shot is... I'm not sure people... Realise sometimes because it's such a handsome-looking show that you count for every, every laser beam 
is is a shot that, is, that uh, takes yes. a person a couple of days to do and the the way we work the the, the special effects shots out is now ma on man hours and so we have yep. a given number of man hours for the team at the mill yeah. to uh, work on the show and and that's how we do it they they will then sit down with a script break down the script and work out how yeah. long it will take to do a laser beam or how long it will take to do um um the head being squashed by the dalek suckers and and how many you know man hours that will take and then we literally work out how yes how we're going to and it's it a, it's a strange thing isn't it because our, our special effects company the mill their work is so brilliant and seamless it's almost like people don't notice which is know. kind of what it's you want it. So it is what you want and often some of the best work they do you know like extending that wall at the back of the sphere like making this yes. you and know the matte paintings the, the matte paintings mm. and some of the, the views white wall out of the window so I, I forget yeah. that the white wall yeah the is white wall is extended. extended and it sort of almost looks seamless and 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 it, it, but the range of their help. work is, is Oh, can I say that? I'm sorry. I, just, I remember typing this going, oh, my God, and the walls blow up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cybermen enter and troopers enter and yeah. the Daleks are firing and the Genesis arc goes off. I am typing it weeping. And I know I've got 27 battles to come. No. It's like... I you want to try reading it? <laughs> <laughs> In the cold light of day. So Russell, so, so Russell, when you were typing that, do you do the voices in your head? Were you having Cybermen eating? <laughs> well, I didn't know what a Cyberman voice was like when I was doing this, I suppose. So, um, but you were doing Cybermen the... meeting Dalek voices as you were writing it. I'd no. like to be in your house for that. I was just too busy weeping. <laughs> This was hell to shoot. This oh. was yeah, hell to this do. Was really this was shot in one day, and then we had to go back. We didn't have enough coverage, and then we but had to go back. Cutaway. That's yes. a cutaway. We did that's later. That's that is too, and that. And again, you can see they're slightly graded, yes. slightly differently. Yeah. And we did the best we could to make it. Fit. Oh, I think it works now. Yeah, I it does. Still slightly feel the Mickey moments fudged. We didn't quite get the coverage that we needed. Of his on hand that. going no, on. Well, of him falling backwards yeah. because it was quite a difficult thing for him well, to do without injuring himself. And we, yes, and we also did have more coverage of it, but it was a bit pony, wasn't it? It yes. was a bit big. It was ever so no difficult for no. just to do without injuring himself because he had yes. he sort of had to go backwards. It was over some yes. dead bodies. It was, and on the day we had five minutes to film it, so it it, it was hell to film that. Yes. It was. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't have been going backwards, I suppose. If you're falling for to yeah, hand yeah. or something, yeah. you should have. Anyway, never mind. So the team, Ray, Love back together. Love this bit together. of music. This, tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick this is in a place called yes. Brackle Bunkers. That's the Doctor's male on male kiss, which has to happen oh, in episode, episode 13. That's quite Thank right, you. too. Quite right. <laughs> you had to bring that in, didn't you? <laughs> it's no agenda. <laughs> Jackie on the loose. Jackie on the loose. Here we are in and Brackle then Bunkers then again, which is um, a nuclear... Bunker, basically, was Is built it? in the eighties. Yeah, no. Um, between here and uh, between Cardiff and Bridgend. Seriously, a nuclear yeah, bunker. It's a nuclear bunker. It looks this. amazing. Oh, I thought it was just like an electric plant. No, or it's a nuclear bunker. Oh, and then the most extraordinary performances from Camille and Sean here. Yeah, the first Look at time. Them. So I'm freaking it. You imagine? I, I do often watch this and think, God, what would it be like? For her, for because her. he's expecting to see her. Exactly, he's but, worked for it out. Her, yes. but for her, it's But also, she's the one who's lived a life without him. Yes. Actually, you know, without this man. And he I know, I'm, I'm but, You know, that man. I'm very pleased with that bit of dialogue. He says, she says you're old. And he says, you don't see she's not yes. old to him. No. Well, I'm very pleased with that bit of dialogue. Just that's it. for you. <laughs> I'm glad. Slap, yes. it's slap yourself on the back. And the lions I have enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Include. One start listening. Get out of my house, Mrs. Manorick. <laughs> 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 you two are off. <laughs> Look at the saddest scene in the world. I know. Look. I listen to you. Look, even even without sound, it's a sad. There's scene a in little the world. niggling worry in the back of my yes. mind that I wish I'd given the doctor a little control panel that he could have said, "Yes, I'll just seal off the internal yes. doors for the Daleks." Yes, because because the world Cause is, is being world. destroyed outside. Yeah. We were originally charmed into not doing that because remember it ended with Mickey turning to the doctor and saying, "World's still ending," and the doctor went, "I know," <laughs> like that. Well, we cut mm. that because it was so bad a line. They delivered it beautifully. It was a bad line, but as a result, because we've been charmed by that line, yes, we never saw this clean. And actually, if he could have been doing Active. something here, yeah. I don't know. I'm doing yeah, like of your scripts. Don't, don't. I think sometimes you know with the with an action script like this you actually can just stop and go let's have a bit of emotion here and a bit of reality and let's give our people something to to really stir them because i think often in action 
in, act, in act, action episodes and action films, I think you yes, forget the emotion, and it's just about running and fighting and that. I know. When, I you, love get it, this, it when you get it you. perfect, then it mm. all beautifully overlaps, and you get it right. You know, I'm trying to think of a perfect example that does that. Like, oh, it's like Terminator 2 or something. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm only fiddling. I'm, I mean, you might as well yeah. sit in a podcast and fiddle with things. Well, okay. Rather yeah, than say hurrah. Mm. Hey, here we go. There we go. And also... As an eight-year-old boy, as I am, this is what I'm waiting for. The I know, exactly. So the this fight. is RAF St. Athen, um, which is an RAF base, which is just outside Cardiff. Yep. Um, which has been extended upwards and outwards and dying Cybermen falling off gantries, all by the marvellous meal. Yes, everyone exists on ground level. No, yes. There's a lot of Cybermen added on ground yes. level as well. Yeah. Um, and again, this is counting shots desperately, aren't we? Like, Imagine each one of these is an effect. I would do sit in meetings going, right, so there's one shot with the arc, as we see that being attacked, and it's glowing, and we can have so many shots coming out of the Black Daleks. I don't know if people know how exactly how much it's counted. Mm. And everything is storyboarded for these sequences. And how much extra the mill, bless them, then give us. Because I see the finished result, and I'm going, oh, I didn't know we'd agree to that. Oh, that's a bit more. Mm. That's more than we were expecting. So, actually, they are... Brilliant. And I love this next shot coming up, which is Canary Wharf matted in. Do you? Look, I don't quite believe it. I really love it. Mm. Do you? I'm really charmed by now. Yes. I'm, I'm completely with that. Because you're happy with that on the trailers, aren't yes, you? Yes, I like, really am. Oh, my teeth are a little bit on edge. Were they? But, yeah. No, I'm with it. <laughs> I love this bit. Oh, see, I like love that. Clamps. But you see, that's... I mean, although all those lasers have to be paid for, that's a marvellously cheap way of showing a battle going on around you, and I like that. Yes. Yeah. I think it's as good as seeing... Yeah. Daleks and Cybermen, because it's sort of funny at the same mm. time. There's a little comedy to that shot of just yeah. the madness of the battle. We were dredging out these shots. Do remember, we were going, can oh, we have another? We were. Literally, the edit, Dave, the editor, was like, every fleeting glimpse of a soldier or a Dalek turning its head or whatever mm. is dropped in there. Oh, we love that. Oh, this. This is. But I think that's one of the finest effect shots we've ever done. Yeah. The roof, that opening, roof opening and that. And canary the angle. Wharf the canary wharf it. angle is extraordinary. It's, it's so just very surprising. It feels so right. It's so real. Do you remember, though, when Van Staten's uh, helipad mm. was going to open like that? We couldn't do it. No. No. We could now. We could yeah. use those elements and just... We could dump. now. There you go. When we do the director's cut of Dalek. <laughs> well, mind you, Van Staten's roof was opening and he was flying in on the helicopter. On the helicopter. Yes. <laughs> <It> was that. <laughs> I think that might be the bit we <laughs> Flying do. Daleks. Hooray. Now, you see, because I do try and behave with scripts. Yeah. Before, because you remember before, yes. on the very first draft of this, the, when you had the first half of this script before I'd finished it, the, they were going to use the Jafar Sun Glider, mm. they were, which was called they the were. Space Canoe. It wasn't a great were, spaceship, yes, it was a space yeah. canoe. And in order to get to the top floor, which is all sealed off by um, Daleks and Cybermen, and the Doctor and Rose were going to get into the, into the Jafar Sun Glider and fly outside the Torture Tower and up to the top floor. Are you they glad were. I cut that? They were. <laughs> we were bewildered by the canoe. What we <laughs> the felt. Space canoe. Space canoe. The space canoe. It would have I been like, you know, a I don't know I, yes. Star Galactica. I don't know I was bewildered. I was just sobbing in a car. No, I was <laughs> bewildered. <laughs> Underneath and the I, newspapers. And I saved you like 50,000 quid by having Jake pop up saying, should we take the lift? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was yes. like, all right, then. There we yes. go. I also had, it's funny, I also had severe doubts that they were, well, it was like a Viper or an X-Wing fighter in Star Wars. Yes. And they would have flown through Daleks in the sky, which would have been such an exciting thing for the Doctor and Rose to do. But actually, and I worried about it because they would have had to fly into a Canary Wharf. They would have literally fly onto the top floor. And I thought that was very, very 9 11, to be honest. Yes. Um, I thought mm. that's a very dodgy yes. thing to show. Yeah. I said, yes, that's what totally Yes, that would have felt wrong. Oh, little old lady being exterminated. How marvellous. Brilliant. Array. In a shot that was corrected. Because yes. in the original FX shot, the whole picture went blue. Yes. It wasn't just blue. Which is a choice, really. Like, yes. Because. Um, I didn't like it because I think, actually, I never liked the whole picture surrounding a Dalek extermination turning blue. And if you'd start to do that there, then the whole world should yes. be turning blue. This is where we have begged extra effects off the yes, mill and is. paid them a bit. But, um, and paid them a few quid. But Russell saw the first cut and they were none of those laser beams in the windows. And no. so you. And you wanted a sense really of oh, the well, fight outside. The battle to be going on. And it, you're absolutely right. It was. And when we, when we locked this edit, we, did, we were promised some laser beams yeah. in the windows. Um, I never expected them to add so many and so well, but... Um, it just looks glorious now. Yeah, it, 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 the it feels one, more it? scale. And it really does feel like... There's it's a very tricky to see next. It's like three minutes of dialogue while the world is ending. So um, I know the computer's counting down to 
yes. reboot systems. But, um, you know, you sit there thinking, well, I've got this information earlier, it doesn't work, you have to stop the adventure earlier for it to start then, you to explain the sunglasses earlier. Russell, tell us how, this is yeah. the second part of a two-parter, tell us how you plan, how you write across a two-part. you have the whole story in your head? Before you start writing episode Ooh, twelve, I mean, I have last a podcast to explain all that. No, but just um, like like I, what I'm thinking about there is him wearing those glasses. At yes. what point did you think you would need that? Oh right, in order? You, I mean you know, that's the sort of thing you don't. It is hard to explain. I, I mean, there's no moment in which I realised I knew that it was always part of it. It's like it right. was always always going to do that. It was it, it was all part of the army of ghosts, which was part of the void stuff. Which yeah, was part of the story. And so I can't ever say there was never a moment where I'm sitting typing thinking, I know, I'll have yeah. to wear 3D glasses. It was just, do you know what I mean? It's so you've just, just done... always part of it. It's, it's, it's So it's you've there. done the thinking around particular elements of the script. So if you've got particles and the void and you, you've, you've thought through that whole... Yes, but I can't honestly say that I think through them because yeah. when you think of an idea like that, it all, it's all there at once. It's not like, oh, there's void, and then the next day you think, oh, what if there's void stuff? And then the next day you think, oh, so we can see those yeah. 3D glasses. It's like, mm. when you think of an idea, it's like thinking of a tune. It's all there. Mm. It's all there. Working on the mechanics of how they do. I mean, the most, I think the most interesting thing about this whole story is that what, what holds you up often is, oh, I'm, I'm talking nonsense now, and it's hard to describe. No, this is good. Keep no, going. but I can change my mind tomorrow and describe it differently. But it's like, it is like talking about, more, more so with Doctor Who stories, now, it's like talking about geography. And it's like, once you've worked out the L shape of this whole story, which is like sphere underground, levers on top, and then turn right, and there's the breach. Mm -hmm. It's like, and actually this whole drama is built around two levers. Mm -hmm. Because you've got, the whole mm -hmm. thing is about splitting up Rose and the Doctor. Yeah. So it's actually, it's the, I'm not sitting at home thinking of 3D glasses or, yes. or what the Daleks say to the Cybermen. It's, it levers. You've got to get to and fro to the... That's why it slightly annoys me that it's not clear that the troopers are defending the lever room from yep. the Cybermen because I think that's vital, that, that the sanctity of this room, its, its location and its safety is, is what the whole thing is about. It's about two levers. Once you've thought of the two levers, and the, the two levers are the first thing I thought of. It's yes. not like you think of the story and they think, yes. ah, what if it's powered up by two levers? It's like you've got two levers that are the gateway between worlds and she will be hanging onto them and will fall through. Yes. So, so it's like Yes. It's geographically when you you know, when a script is late off me, trust me, it's like it's it's more often than not it's it's the geography. I don't mean literally like mm. how many flights up, how many stairs is it? I mean the shape of a story. It's like it's oh I'll shut up now. Look at people zooming to and fro <laughs> to a parallel world. How are you feel? Keep your clothes on. <laughs> No, but the way you've gone for a bar. I had it off. <laughs> Best night's sleep you've had in a while, isn't it? No, the way you've described that makes absolute sense. I can see that in every script you do, that geography being. Well, it's weird because it's it's hard to talk about. It's yeah. I don't mean no, of course. geography. It's shape. It's, no. It's, Shape you of mean story. geography of of the story, the yes. shape of the story. You don't mean literally, no, location not wise. Literally, can we get can yeah. off? Um, no. We had uh, conversations about that. Saying if we remember the very first tone meetings, like shall we invent our own skyscraper? Should mm. we CGI it, and design it? And yeah, we um, were going to for a bit, for like two days. <laughs> until you got the rest of the script. That's yes. when that's when you only had episode twelve. Yeah, and I was, was sitting there going, yeah. mm, the rest of the episode might cost a penny or two. Look now, Tracy Ann Cyberman on her way. <laughs> to oh, say to and we chose it slightly yeah. hard, isn't it? We chose to bleed a bit of her own voice through here. I love that. I, I love that. I love like that. Like her own self she's is reasserting. Back. I don't think it was, that was that Graham's idea. It was. I, I love that. It it's a brilliant her. idea. Oh, and I think tear. it's worth the world. And I think she's, she's even got a bit of a camp twist as she turns that gun. <laughs> it has to be said. She moves like no other Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> that Paul Casey. That's it. Bless him. <laughs> I think it's Tracy Ann. I think she was that desperate to get in one. She would. She'd do it. She'd do it. How marvellous to be the voice of a Cyberman. Oh, I know. <laughs> and here we go. This is where the geography makes the sense Magna so off we go now. Glory God. And again, can you imagine writing this? How many shots? Oh, yo, I'd love to see your face reading this. They what? They go through the wall? I know. Hundreds those those four flying Well, it's Daleks. often because actually my first... I never had picked the scripts up and I never have a, have a sort of... A, Oh my God, he's mad! Reaction. I just, I, I just sit yeah, there and I just think, no, but I just genuinely go, how are we going to do this? Yes. And when I panic or when I flap, is actually when I think, 
I really don't understand how we're going to get this. <laughs> and also, also, Russell, you're so un- understating how balanced your scripts are. Do yeah, you have a big sequence? Are, they yeah. are. <laughs> and then you no, do, you you are, do you're think very like balanced. a producer. You're very, you're you do have a Well, it's a lot of dialogue. It's like Pete yeah. and Jackie in the yeah. corridor. is like four pages of dialogue with no effects. Yeah, so that makes Look. it possible. Look at this. I'm sorry, I love this. I love this. It's, it's the shape shot, of it as they bounce through. So tell me, so the Cybermen, where have they gone now? They went through, you see, the Cybermen didn't come through the breach, no. apart from that first, that lot we happened to see walk through, mm. because there's the hole in the world, which the Daleks, yeah. uh, which the Daleks are going through now, yeah. but there's also all the fault lines. Oh, Remember the okay. Doctor described all the fault, the fault lines? lines. So because yes, they just, yes, they yes. appear, because actually we saw that when they appeared at Taj Mahal. They, they just the appear the world. Appear. So they've gone through, back through um, the fault lines see? into you. the void. Thank so, you. I um, never asked you that. No, bless, it was... And here we go. Oh, oh and the see? music now is so exciting. And the Daleks are slowing down. That's beautiful. I yes. Re- I remember seeing this on the rushes when there was just green cloth behind her and yes. she was hanging on a wire and a trapeze. And it was <laughs> still so exciting oh, yeah. and so really? moving. And then and to a lot see of this, this. Billy's actually doing practically. I mean, yes. she's not on a oh, wire yeah. there. She's yeah. throwing yes. herself no, around. And she's such it's a cleverly physical actress that she really could. Could, and could do it. And there's the only shot. the one shot. Which is coming really, where she's, on, is the coming wire. Where she's yes. on the wire. But it's also in this moment, it's Uh-oh. his scream. There it's she the goes. Scream. You see, I think it's good that we're listening to this about sound now because we've been pieces now, Julie. We, we would, would have been pieces, but that scream, that how we got Look at do. that. It's like. Oh, I love it. I think it's so well done. Yeah. It's um, beautiful. And so that so she's sort of that's all practical, and then for this Between this next shot that shot's see, on a wire, yeah. on a wire where she's actually she's falling, down. Wire, she's falling down, um, like she did when she fell off the balloon, or or yeah. um, when they when they when they fell down there. Oh, and her dad. And a, how much did Noah Clark want to be the one who came through? Oh. He was petitioning. He was like phoning me up. Phoning and me. it I, could it could have been Mickey. Well, yeah, it was you all. Didn't you always want to be Mickey? Yes, no. Phil, Phil wanted it to be I Mickey, did, and I, I wanted yeah. it to be Pete. I, it was I always, I did it was always it been only Mickey. ever Pete in the job. He the just because... Well, he's got to redeem himself as a dad. Yes, he's got to he's admit got to that she's... He's got to reassert the family. It's, it's not redeem himself as a dad, it's admitting that she's his daughter. Yes, which exactly. Which isn't, technically, but it's... it's he's accepting her, rebuild his family. Now, claiming that, and, and, and becoming a bit of a doctor himself, in yes. a way. He's like assuming that authority and... Pete's had the biggest journey in that way. And it is his daughter. He's, he's finally accepting that somehow he has some sort of daughter. And in I really the weird Russell T. Davis world. In a twisted <laughs> universe. And now I want to say, formally on the podcast, this is my <laughs> most favourite piece of music yes. from Murray Gold. Mm. I've been it's, singing this for I days. have not s- stopped singing it for mm. two weeks. I, I wake up singing it. <laughs> I was in bed the other he's time. killing oh. me with it. Thinking this music was going through it, my Because head. it's so perfect. It's so surprising. Yeah, what I love about this is that I was expecting violins and heartbreak mm. and it's and sex. Murray describes this as teenage. Oh. He says yes. he kept on saying she's a young girl. She's still young, no matter yes. how bad this is. It's young and she's raw and and that's so clever because I would have thought of it as very adult and mature. And he's just he's brilliant. It's modern and sexy mm. and surprising. And it pushes the story on somehow. An or- a sad orchestra with violins would be saying that's the end. Stop. And uh, he's it's extraordinary <clears throat> work. We filmed this scene twice. This little shot. Because we had David walking away, you know, being much more upset. On the demand, we weren't sure. Julie Gardner. Yes, and I was completely wrong. Julie but wasn't I, sure uh, whether she felt his reaction was big enough. And David was really quite anti it, but in no, a lovely was, David way, he did it right. and said, well, I'll do it and we'll see. And he was right. Yeah. Because he he's was, better he to save it for right. the point that he does save it. Out, he's, because that yes. breaks your heart. He said, I'm upset at the end. Look, they hold hands. I love I that. Do. And you know, Louise, look at all their clothes matching. Yeah. All those three people, four people, I think they're all they different. all match and they're all in that blue world and it's yes. very perfect. Barry and has been drawing all those elements together all the way along. It's Graham's idea to put the rose in. That, the it's rose beautiful. voice isn't in the script and I love that. I can't believe it was never in the script and I'd be claiming it as my own forevermore. I um and I, I really seeing... like these these next couple of shots because I do you know, in slap slapping us on the back again, but I think <laughs> this this stuff <laughs> where she's friends. telling the um Telling them the story, I just think every drama should look like this at some yes. point. It's so yes. beautiful that picture. Yes, 
and the glow of the fire and and these how part of the scripts from now on these part of the scripts were sort of hidden from they everyone were completely secret just because from the majority of the crew yeah I mean our crew were marvelous the scripts get left around and word spreads and so so we were filming this like because they were at the Tyler's house from Rise of the Sidemen and, and the Age of Steel and people didn't know what was going on no <laughs> we <laughs> literally we literally did not give our crew the so, sides so for Phil these. we must tell the marvelous story of that production meeting we went to that mini tone meeting where remember do you remember that moment that glorious moment where we hadn't given the script pages out oh but, but the we first did have a schedule. AD had done a schedule and she'd summarized in one line each scene and we're all sitting there rose says goodbye I, to the doctor on the beach it was, it was absolutely brilliant. and i pulled you out of the meeting and said it's summarized we're going to have to go back in and we're going to have to lie and so yeah. i went back in and i said now we're not going to talk about the end of the schedule because we've just the script is short uh, russell's <laughs> written a short script so we've mapped out possible locations you, yeah oh, wow. and we everyone did. they seem to believe it or did I just imagine that I think they sort of did, uh, I mean I think they were we too were just bamboozling like, oh, fine. <laughs> the bamboozling but that's, that was the we case and we didn't we absolutely did we didn't give people script pages or anything and script no. pages are vital to people just to put you know just the person who's swinging the boom needs the, the pages yes. because they need to know when they've got to put the boom on one person or the other and the content well, actually, the scene. you know what we showed that they don't need the script Page. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Because we still got it made. And Love look touch. at that supernova. And how sad were you on this beach, Filippo? Oh, oh, we. I it was very sad, you. wasn't it? I cannot tell you. We all cried. You were ruined. You were wrecked. You, were, you were so ruined. We, we were all. And even at home, we were ruined. <laughs> David, Billy, and I stood. There was a there was a Land Rover just off camera there to the left where where they sat because it was freezing cold. It was really cold. We sat and we we filmed this and we all stood and hugged each other and cried. Oh, showbiz. We really did. I sent a letter to Sean Dingwall saying, thank you for being Pete. I particularly loved that day. We took you all the way to that beach for no dialogue, just to stand in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your finest work, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at that launch. He was laughing about it. Oh, <laughs> I know he did. That's but funny. Bless that Mickey and Pete just standing, coming to a whole day's work and freeze. I know. <laughs> yeah. And have no dialogue at all. There were a couple of closer shots on them, but we didn't use them. We didn't the need it, no. Oh, this is, um, I oh. love that they're all there, though. So do yes. I. It's oh, right. Happy they had to be. Together. It's absolutely right. And it's my favourite thing. It's that. It's my absolute favourite thing. It's, it's that shameless sort of invented family, you know? It's mm. like a mother and father from two different universes. Mickey, and no one knows. We don't even know if he's a boyfriend now. What is he? Still a no. friend? He's like their son. Almost. It's like Jackie's always loved. He's like becoming an adopted son now with their time travelling daughter it's just such an odd collection of people it's just a mm. modern family that's what families are it's not 2.4 kids in no. A that, no yeah and yet they're happy they are are they fit they, oh, they fit oh, together. They, I thought you said they, they are fit. Well, they are fit as well, but they fit <laughs> as well as being fit, they fit together. My Do a fashion. favourite thing in this scene is the clothes that Louise has given Jackie. Yes. Because it really oh. moves me, actually. Jackie is finally smart you know we've seen <laughs> yeah, her, but we've, she really deliberately did yes that, you we've know. seen her in tracksuits and awful tops mm. you know because she's never had much money and and actually she's now gosh she's not only got her husband back but he's rich and uh and you know she you know how i always fight off that trash with cash thing i i that, mm. was, that assumption that give a working class character money and they'll go mad with it because that's very condescending mm. but you know and this is and jackie looks classy here yes. and beautiful like she's handled it all beautifully and I think, I think it's the most moving thing in the scene, actually. It's, it, I do, much as, God, I love Billy and David here, but it's that sense of they are literally better as a result of knowing the Doctor. Array. And even mm. without the sound, it's upsetting, isn't it? Mm. I know. Well, on the first, or well, the final edit of this, the mill did very sophisticated hologram effects yes. for the Doctor. He fizzed, much like the parting of the ways. Ninth Doctor hologram, where we were like, no, 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 no. The script actually says not like a hologram. Because it seemed all technical and scientific, didn't it? It felt like a piece of science fiction, whereas it's much more like a fairy story now. It's like he's a ghost, he's an image. You know, he sort of fizzed out on this mm, shot, he disappeared. You like, oh, that's like the least romantic <laughs> shot you could possibly imagine. And also, it felt like a message, it didn't feel live. Because we've seen holograms before as yeah, pre recorded it's messages. Really gotta be there with For him. me, it didn't feel live, yeah. but it was like he planned it all, sort of thing. It was actually beaming himself off. Yeah, across the universe. I think Billy's makeup here is perfect as well. It's clever, I, she's so beautiful in the scene. Yes, it's, it's, it's 
exquisite. Making her feel years old. Oh, how cruel are we? Not you. It's was he going to say it then? I don't know, Phil. Do you not? He was taken away. He absolutely was going to say it. Oh. I can confirm for the nation. Oh, you Stop. can't know. Yes. You can't say that for a fact. I can. I Rose am the Tyler. viewer. Oh, I am the viewer. Rose he Tyler, was going to say I owe you ten pence. I, he was going to tell her he loved oh, her. I will oh, not have it any other way. That, that gets, oh, by this point. And that wide shot, it looks like the loneliest thing in the world in being in that TARDIS for that moment. Yes. Do you know, oh, I thought you were going to say on the beach. On the How beach. much wrangling oh, of people well. with dogs and <laughs> people <laughs> with kites empty. and people with windsurf. And oh. just as just as we were filming it, four blokes came down with their windsurf <laughs> and then started going no. out. We had to send someone in to oh. pull them off. But, oh, it was amazing. Graham was dying down to that big wide shot, but I just love seeing oh. the people. Mm. You know, yes. he's, he's always like, it's a film, it's a film, it's a wide shot, that's kind of, it's not a film, it's it's television. And, and now, Russell, is all where, are we, where are we going here then? So it's all over. It's all over. The well, Lonely God. And Well, never end my, for my years of training on soap operas, which is like, never end on the, never end on the, actually it's not soap operas, it's any old drama, they don't, don't take the audience down into their boots, they don't want to come back. It's like, you've got to go up, you've got to move on. And here we go. Hooray! <laughs> I've got to say, it's the best casting idea I've ever had. Yes. <laughs> Marvellous. Yeah. Did we shoot this on the very last day of the TARDIS? Yes, we yes, did. Yes, we did, right the before the rap the party. And Catherine, oh, we, 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 we've been... Kept, kept us all from the rap party. Yes, that's yes. right. So it, David and Catherine were together yes, there. Yes, with they a were tiny indeed crew. indeed on the very last Huge day with secret. ten people. We, I was being first AD. You were. Russell was the tea lady. Yes. yes. Ed was there, moving, moving. Ed was moving. And production designer. And things. Yes. And you will find out in the Runaway Brown... Right, how Donna, as she's Hooray, called. Donna. That's the first time. We yes, said that's she's the first Donna. podcast. Mm, yeah. Roll up, roll up, buy your podcast here. Indeed. <laughs> and Thank you very much. Continued. That was the end of Series 2, Thank Doctor you. Who. Uh, faithful Thank viewer. you. Thank you, Faithful Viewer, for tuning in. Hooray. More at Christmas. Hooray.